Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I am very, very, very happy to see you here in another mini common art session. My name is Marcela Grovet and uh, well, I will share with you today um, a topic called art as a window to other realities. We will be discussing the benefits of art among many other topics. So what's the intention for today? We are going to discuss about art as a possibility to learn about other cultures and realities through some paintings from a Brazilian author. So today we are traveling to Brazil thanks to art. What activities are we going to do? Well, you know that Brazilian people love music, love dancing. So we're going to start with a little uh, body percussion exercise. And then we're going to share information about the author, a Brazilian author, of course. Um, uh, we will look, look and discuss about two paintings from this um, Brazilian author. Um, then we will move on to the benefits that art can bring to us. And we will finish the session with a short um, mindful exercise called appreciation, apology, aha. Are we ready? So let's begin with the percussion exercise. All right. So you can do this exercise uh, sitting or standing. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do it sitting so that you can watch um, very good what I do. And I will ask you, for, um, please, to watch me. And then I will give you time to do the same movements that I do. So I do it. And then I point to you so that you do it. I do it. You do it. I do it. You do it. Is it clear? Are we ready? Okay, so sit comfortably. This is going to be easy. And you can do this exercise with your family, with your friends, with your children. It's a very good exercise. It's a brain gym exercise because you are coordinating both hemispheres and you are um, copying some movements to um, improve your communication between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Ready for that? So I do, and you copy. Here we go. You got it? If you want to practice again, you can um, go backwards on the video and practice as many times as you need until you master it. Let's go for the next part of the exercise. Are we ready? Here we go. And we do the same. I do, you do. I do, you do. Ready? This is a little bit more challenging, so let's go for it. All right, were you able to do it? Fantastic. If you haven't been able to do it, go back on the tape and practice as many times as you need until you get it. And then if you wish, you can combine both exercises. 
do your both exercises. Do you remember what the first one was like? Now let's do the second one. Yeah, I made a mistake. Doesn't matter. Practice, practice, practice until you master it. All right, so let's move on to the next activity. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the author. And uh, well, the author of the paintings that we are going to watch is Hector Julio Paride Bernabo, or better known as Caribe. Uh, he was born in Argentina in 1911, but he grew up in Salvador, Bahia. This is a city in Brazil, and he died over there in 1997. He was a painter, an engraver, a draughtsman, an illustrator, a potter, a sculptor, a mural painter, a researcher, a historian, and journalist. So he was multifaceted. Um, he settled in Brazil and naturalized as Brazilian. And he produced 5,000 pieces of work, including paintings and drawings and sculptures and sketches and many other things. And he illustrated books by Jorge Amado, as well as um, the very famous novel by Gabriel Garcia Marquez called 100 Years of Solitude. Let's move on. And now I'm going to share two paintings of this Brazilian um, painter, uh, best known as Caribe. Um, I would like you to observe carefully. Um, think of what you see. Imagine what you think the people are doing. And, um, well, if you like it, not, think about the colors, think about many things that you will see in the painting. Ready for that? Let's go. So here we are. This is the first painting that I want to show to you. It's called Capoeira on the Beach. So first observe carefully. Any special details that you can mention about the painting? What do you think of it? How does it make you feel? Can you sense what these people are doing, where they are? Is this something different? Perhaps you have never seen capoeira Perhaps you have, or listened to, ca to capoeira music. Do you know anything about capoeira? Well, I'm going to share you um, some information around capoeira. Um, capoeira is a martial art that combines dance, acrobatics, music, and philosophy uh, into a unique sort of game. Okay? Capoeira is uh, thought to um, have originated from the enslaved Africans in Brazil. Um, they used this dance or martial art um, as a means of self-defense um, against uh, their slavers to fight for their freedom. Um, of course, um, it then got influenced by uh, the different cultures um, because, the, well, slaves brought to Brazil were not brought only from one country in Africa, but from different places. So generally, it's played in a circle with two opponents playing one against another, while the other players create the rhythm by clapping, by singing or playing um, percussive instruments, okay? So they dance, they play, 
and they sort of fight. So you can see these two rivals dancing and fighting. And you also see uh, a very typical Brazilian instrument called um, berimbau. You can see the, the boxes over here. They are also percussive instruments. The people sitting on them, yes, they are sitting, but they are also playing it. It's capoeira on the beach. They can be done in many places. Sometimes it's done in squares. It's, well, you can see like a lovely um, landscape, the ocean behind. It looks peaceful. Other people behind taking a walk. Um, perhaps the guy on the left uh, is going surfing. And one particular thing about um, this painter is that um, it looks like the heads are detached from the body. They are sort of flying. That's his style. Can you see another characteristic on uh, this painter's style? Yes, mm, the faces, well, the faces have no features. You can't see the eyes, the nose, the mouth, anything. You can only see their bodies and their heads, the color of their skins. Any other thing that you can notice? How do you feel about it? How does that make you feel? Would you like to practice capoeira? Would you like to see a round of capoeira? Would you like to visit Brazil? Have you ever been there? What's your experience? Now, I'm going to share another painting of this same author, right? And the next one is called Music and Dance. Yes, very typical in Brazil. Do you like Brazilian music? Have you ever heard any Brazilian music? What instruments can you see on the painting? A guitar, um, a tambourine. This one over here is a tambourine. This one over here is also playing the tambourine. And other instruments, uh, it looks some sort of a rattle. It makes sounds. Okay, we have here a big drum. Once again, well, at least this fellow, his head is floating. You cannot see any features on their faces. And you can see the colors of their skins. Well, um, a dark skinned person though you see it in blue, some other uh, brown-skinned people. And this woman looks a little bit more like a, a mestiza or, a, well, a combination of a, um, an African descendant and a European descendant. But everybody is enjoying the dance. They are moving to the rhythm. It's like you almost can hear the music. It's like um, this painting invites you to dance. They're all wearing, wearing hats. So perhaps they are somewhere outside, maybe again um, by the beach. But they're having fun dancing. 
can you imagine being there in this place, dancing to the instruments, just moving freely with the music, trying to follow the rhythm? Perhaps you are or you are not a dancing person. But anyhow, whenever we hear music, we just, well, of the body feels like moving. What do you think of the colors that you see, both in this painting and the painting I showed you before? They are quite different, aren't they? The first painting shows um, more pale colors, lighter colors, maybe because it's the day and the sunshine is uh, quite strong, so the artist decided to, pay, to paint this one in uh, lighter colors. And the other one looks in darker colors, maybe it's the night. That's the feeling I get. They are dancing to the music, having a party at night. Which one do you like more? Do you like this artist's paintings? Do they make you feel like you want to visit Brazil? Maybe you are able to visit Brazil or you have been there and you have lived um, what this culture is or you speak Brazilian, you know about the culture, but maybe you don't. So this is one of the characteristics of art. They bring you Art brings you to a, other realities. So what are the benefits of art? Some people like art, some people don't. And you may have one preferred um, expression of art. Maybe you enjoy painting, but you don't enjoy literature, or you enjoy music, but you don't enjoy, um, uh, I don't know, architecture. Um, there are many expressions of art, but all of them bring benefits to ourselves. So I would like you, uh, if I may, um, to have a notebook to answer these questions by yourself first, and then I'm going to share um, some of my participants' uh, viewpoints on my um, common art sessions that go live. Which are the questions? Reflect a little bit. How can art stimulate creativity? Question number two. How can art teach us to appreciate beauty? Next one. How can art make us have different feelings? Question four, how can art help us find answers? And five, how can art be a window to other realities? So if you want to take the time, stop the video, get your own answers. They don't have to be long, they can be short, but get your answers before I share with you what my participants shared during the sessions. All right? So let's go for my students' comments. The first question, how can art stimulate creativity? According to my participants in the common art sessions, uh, when a person sees art, the brain begins to make contact with your own feelings. Another participant shared that uh, it stimulates creativity because it provokes curiosity um, about knowing what else is going on or what um, 
the author was feeling when they created this um, art uh, piece of art or um, what the painting is telling them, etc. It provokes curiosity. And another comment that they made is that art stimulates creati creativity because when we are looking at art, we use our left and our right brain and it promotes opening our brains, communicating both hemispheres uh, to new ideas and to go inside us to reflect about it. And maybe we would like to do that. So it stimulates us being creative. Question number two was, how can art help us appreciate beauty? According to my learners, any art reflects the feeling of the artist and the feelings it provokes in you depends on how you feel in that moment. So you like it, you don't like it, it's up to you, but anyhow, it makes you reflect on how you feel in that moment and maybe a piece of art in one certain moment in your life, um, you can like it. And in another moment of your life, it can really provoke a very harsh feeling and maybe you reject it. Um, another of uh, the comments that I got was that when we appreciate art, uh, we experience freedom, freedom of feeling freedom of expressing, freedom of reacting towards the art, the piece of art that we're watching. And a third comment that I want to share with you is that we watch things with different lenses and it opens our perception of things. So yes, definitely. It's not the same watching a piece that was created in the 12th century to say something than a piece of art that was created in the 21st century. We watch things with different lenses. Question three was, how can art help us find answers? Because art is reflexive. We contact our experiences and life, but sometimes it leaves us with more questions. It's interesting, this paradox, yes? Maybe we find answers, but maybe that special piece of art uh, leaves us with more questions. Another comment I got was that it establishes a context and the sensitivity in ourselves. So this contact to uh, this context and this contact and sensitivity towards ourselves may help us find answers within ourselves. Another comment that I got is that uh, we pay more attention to colors, to forms. We pay more attention and appreciate it with all of our senses, and it. That this contact with all our senses moves things inside of us. Yes, we are letting the right hemisphere get into there. All right, next question was, how can art help us mm, bring us to other realities? Well, Artists live in different worlds. Some of them are Brazilian, others are Mexican or European or African or whatever. And we can travel to these places through the pieces of art that we watch. We get to know their culture. We get to know their um, moment in time. Um, we get to know about them. So they bring us to these other worlds. And through the artist's creativity, we see the way others interpret the world. I have my own interpretation of the world, 
but my interpretation may differ greatly from other person's interpretation of their world. And uh, when we hear comments from other people about the same piece of art, we hear and learn about other realities as well. So especially, well, I, I can see that very often in um, the common art sessions that I give online. Um, I have um, various um, participants in these sessions and they have different backgrounds they have different stories, they have different experiences. So they comment from different viewpoints. Some of them may like a piece of art, others don't. Some of them may find a detail, others won't find that detail and they discover and learn about these other realities. Um, and also art, is a window to other realities because we can go beyond what is uh, the tangible. Um, we have contact with art. People um, have different opinions about the same artwork, as I mentioned. And um, it brings us also a possibility to uh, communicate with one another and explore everything that we can do and everything that we can think without judging the other uh -huh, because we are free to have our own opinion and well think about it if you are not very much into art i would like to invite you to listen to different kinds of music or um google different kinds of art, Renaissance, uh, Impressionism. Uh, over here in this mini common art sessions, I try to give you different um, kinds of art uh, from different um, times, from different styles, and also from different artists, countries, and different kinds of art, photography, painting, sculpture, etc. So, Think about this, maybe you start appreciating art and you start finding the virtues of art. Uh, in my common art sessions, it's very interesting because it's sort of a workshop where my participants talk about what they see, share ideas, share feelings, share personal experiences sometimes, something that the piece of art triggers in their brains. And before we finish the session, let's go to the last part. This is a little bit of a mindful exercise and also a metacognition exercise. Appreciation, apologies, aha. Um, this is something, this is an exercise that you can do every night or every morning because there's always something to appreciate. There is something to maybe apologize for and something that you said, I got it. Aha, uh -huh, I got it. So appreciation. What are you thankful about today? What have you accomplished? Can you think of three things that you can say thank you? Three things that happened to you today, three people who helped you around, who um, did something for you. Just to be thankful because we woke up this morning is something to appreciate. Next, can you think of one, two, three things that you should apologize for? Um, maybe you um, did some harm to somebody, not because you wanted, because you made a mistake. So, um, or something that you regret that you did. I am sorry because I did this, or I am sorry because I didn't behave correctly, whatever it is. Or I would have liked things to be otherwise. 
And the next one. Aha. What did you learn today? Or what did you learn during this session? What did you learn from somebody else? What did you learn um, of an experience that you lived today? There is always something we learn. All right? And I would also like to um, show my appreciation to Lizzie, one of my learners at Common Art, because she is the one who brought this knowledge to me. She is the one, well, she speaks Brazilian. She has um, learned a lot about um, um, Brazil. And she is the one who shared the knowledge of this painter and of this um, expression of art, this, uh, these paintings and these authors. So thank you, Lizzie, very much for everything that you shared with me. And I would like to end this session with a quote from uh, Claudia Madrazo. She is a Mexican uh, researcher and she created something that is called Desarrollo de la Inteligencia a Través del Arte. Uh, and it is the fundamentals of my common art sessions. So what I'm trying to do in these sessions is to develop languages through art. Uh, and she mentions that art is a window to other realities. Um, over here, you have another painting of the same author. Um, you can see sort of a marketplace. So if you are Mexican, you will see that um, this painting reflects a different kind of marketplace than those that we find in Mexico or any country that you are um, watching this. Is it the same as in your country? Is it different? So it's a window. Art is a window to other realities. I hope you have enjoyed the session and I invite you to explore art, to um, get to know a little bit about it. Uh, there are many videos in YouTube with explanations about different pieces of art. You can go to museums, you can go to concerts. Um, next time you are on the road, maybe you can admire the pieces of architecture in your city and start thinking about it, feeling about it. How do you feel? How does that piece of art make you feel? If you watch a photograph, if you watch a piece of pottery, what do, what uh, memories does that bring to you? Or, um, I don't know, how does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being here. And I'll see you next week. Enjoy, be happy. And once again, thank you.